Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation or a log equation. But this time, it's going to be more interesting because we have different bases. Base 2 and base 3. Okay. I'll be presenting two methods and also show you a graph at the end. So let's get started with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and isolate log x with base 2. So if you subtract log x with base 3 from both sides, you're going to get the following. And now, so here's the problem. I have two logs on the same side, so why not combine them, right? We have a lot of nice properties like log, you know, AB can be written as log A plus log B. It can be in a base, by the way. And uh, log A over B can be written as log A minus log B and vice versa. So why not use this property, right? So the you can condense or expand depending on which direction uh, you need to go. But the problem is the bases are different and they are not related. So what I mean by related is if you had bases like 2 and 8 or 2 and 4, such as they can both be written as powers of 2, then you could combine them after some manipulations. But 2 and 3, they're both prime numbers. Uh, they have no relationship, you know, except for the fact that they are consecutive. Uh, anyways, they're not related in that sense. So we have to separate them and use a different approach. That's what makes it actually a more interesting problem. Anyways, I talked too much. Let's go ahead and combine these two things. And now to combine them, I'm going to write the one as log 3 in base 3. And now this is going to allow me to combine because now I have the same base. Make sense? You can only combine if you have the same base. So now I can write it as log 3 over x, of course, in the same base. And then you're looking at this equation like, okay, fine. What can I do with this? Uh, you can do a couple different things. For example, you can set both of these equal to a variable uh, or uh, you can just use the definition, right? But let's go ahead and do the variable way because it's more straightforward and uh, it's especially better for beginners. If you're new to logs, um, it, this is going to be better. Anyways, set both of these expressions equal to y and do not ask why. From here, you can use the definition of logs. For example, if log x with base 2 is y, from here, remember 2 is the base, 2 to the power y equals x. And then use the second equation. Notice that I'm dealing with them separately. So that kind of gives me a system of equations, right? And this gives me, since 3 is the base, I can write it as 3 to the power y equals 3 over x. Now, this may look like a difficult system, but actually, if you look at it very carefully, uh, x and 3 over x are going to cancel out. The x's are going to cancel out when multiplied. So, that kind of tells you multiply those two expressions. That's a sign. So, 2 to the power y multiplied by 3 to the power y is obviously 6 to the power y, but it's also x times 3 over x. Isn't that cool? They cancel out, leaving us with a single number, 3, and a single variable with base 6, which is really cool. So 6 to the power y is equal to 3. Now, at this point, you can do a couple things. You can log both sides or ln both sides or any base, or you can just use base 6. Base 6 makes sense because our base is 6 here. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Log 6 to the power y equals log 3. Of course, they're both in base 6. Now we can go ahead and move this to the front. And that's going to give me y times log 6, base 6. So that's going to be 1. So this is going to be y equals log 3, base 6. Now, this is not what I'm looking for because I'm looking for x. So how do I convert it? Using the formulas or the substitution method we use. We said that uh, y is equal to what? Y is equal to both of these. Which one do you want to use? It doesn't matter, but I want to use the second one. I mean the first one, this one, because it looks uh, simpler. So Y is equal to log X with base 2, according to my um, substitution. And now I'm going to set it equal to log 3 with base 6. Now, again, this is an equation where the bases are different and you can't relate them. But... Don't worry about it because we can use the definition. We can always use the definition. So we can go ahead and basically 
just write it as 2 to the power of that equals x. Make sense? That is the definition of log. If you don't know anything about log, at least learn the definition first because that's going to help you a great deal. So from here, x becomes 2 to the power log 3 base 6. And that is the answer. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Again, our goal was to find x, and there's a single variable in the original equation, remember? So we're done when we find x. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and then we're going to be looking at the graph of this as well. So anyways, so original equation. And now I'm going to use a slightly different approach a little bit different. Okay, so instead of isolating the log x with base 2, this time I'm going to isolate log x with base 3. And I, some people are going to be like mad, like, oh, it's the same method. No, it's not because you're doing something different, right? So that should be different. And at the end, you'll be surprised. Okay, hopefully. So now I'm going to do the same thing. You know, you know the drill, hopefully. This is log 2 base 2. And then now we can combine them because they have the same base. Notice that. So we can write log x equals log 2 over x because remember, and this is base 2, the quotient uh, uh, turns into subtraction and subtraction turns into a quotient. So, so I should probably say this uh, in a different way. The difference of logs turns into the log of a quotient. Okay, that's more accurate or more rigorous. Okay, some people like the rigor. Anyways, so from here, what can I do? Same thing. Set it equal to something. But what if you didn't want to do that, right? What's an alternative? You can use the definition, say, 3 to the power log to this equals x. But trust me, uh, this is not going to be very easy because then you have to log. Anyways, this is not a good method at all. So I'm going to use the good old approach. So set it equal to, how about z this time? You don't have to use the same variable. Okay. So from here, we get 3 to the power z equals x and 2 to the power z equals 2 over x. Now we're going to multiply these two things together like before. Same thing pretty much. This is 6 to the power z, but also x times 2 over x. x cancels out and we end up with a beautiful equation 6 to the power z equals 2. Hopefully you z what I z. I mean you see what I see uh, to z or not to z. So from here we can log both sides and z moves and we get z times 1, so z becomes log 2 with base 6. But z is not the goal, x is the goal. And remember, x is 3 to the power z, or the other one, doesn't matter, same thing, but I like the first one better. So x equals 3 to the power z, so it's equal to 3 to the power log 2 with base 6. So that's the answer, and now let's compare our answer uh, to the first method. The first method gave us 2 to the power log, 2 to the power log 3 base 6. And this is from the first method. And this is from the second method. Wow. Why are they different? And the answer is they're not. They look different, but they're not different. They are the same. Why? Because 3 to the power log 2 with base 6 is the same as 2 to the power log 3 with base 6. Now notice. Uh, something interesting, this is a special property of logs, by the way. If these two bases are the same, these numbers can interchange. In other words, you have something like a to the power log c base b. You can write it as c to the power log a base b. Same base is being used, but the base is in the exponent. It's kind of weird, right? But anyways, that is a very special property of logs. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up. Now here's the graph of y equals log x base 2 plus log x base 3. It just looks like a normal log, right? It is, sort of. And y equals 1, uh, because this was equal to 1 originally, remember? That was uh, the original equation. And this is the intersection point, the abscissa, such a different word for x-coordinate. And this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care, and bye-bye. By the way, I keep saying I'll see you tomorrow, but it's probably not tomorrow, sooner than that. Take care.